Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Do you remember back in 2018? The Pocophone F1 was the official flagship killer back then, showing the same flagship Snapdragon 845 as the Pixel 3 and the Galaxy Note 9. Now, unfortunately, I don't think a phone is going to have an impact like that again for a very long time. But the Pocophone F3 comes very, very close. So the F3 has a more powerful chip than the Snapdragon 845 of 2018. It has the Snapdragon 870, which is a brand new Qualcomm chip, just shy of the Snapdragon 888, which is in most flagship smartphones in 2021. For £349, you can get the 8GB version with 256GB of internal storage. And for £329, you get the 6GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. For me, you may as well pay that extra 20 quid and get that extra RAM and storage. So the design and build quality, in my opinion, is excellent. Gorilla Glass 5 protects the 6.67 inch AMOLED display. It's a full HD plus display with a resolution of 2400 by 1080p and has a peak brightness of 1300 nits. And I personally love the sunlight mode in these Poco and Xiaomi devices. You never have any issues viewing these phones in direct sunlight. So we have HDR10 plus support a 120 hertz refresh rate, and a touch sampling rate of 360 hertz. It's safe to say the display is nearly up there with the very best. It's just lacking the Quad HD Plus features, really. So the back of the phone is great, but also disappointing. It's also protected by Gorilla Glass 5, it's a glass back, and it's so shiny and reflective, which looks great, it looks beautiful, but you do get a hell of a lot of fingerprints and smudges on the back. Uh, so you're constantly buffering it all the time to get it clean. But overall, it's an excellent design and finish. And in the hand, it feels nice and comfortable. It's not too thick and it's a sort of adequate sort of weight as well. It's not too heavy. The plastic frame obviously helps with that as well. That reduces the, the weight. And although the frame is only plastic, it definitely doesn't feel cheap. So performance was always going to be the F3's strong point. And it's definitely not disappointed. It totally smashed through my gaming test that I did uh, just over a week ago. You can see oh, yeah. up in the card there if you want to check that out. Oh. It totally smashed through that. And more importantly, the 870 chip does not overheat like the Snapdragon 888 does. It kept like a constant oh, warm temperature throughout the gaming test. So we're really onto a winner here in terms of performance. General use overall was also very good. The 120 Hertz refresh rate improves things further with the touch response and scrolling. I mean, it's probably up there with the best in terms of performance against some other 888 phones, Snapdragon, Snapdragon 888. Especially after people have been throttling the 888, the performance drops quite dramatically on some of the smartphone tests I've seen. On the side of the phone, there is a fingerprint sensor, and this is rapid. I love the fingerprint sensor on the side, integrated with the power button. Uh, a quick tap, and it's unlocked. So it's super fast, super responsive, and I think it's unlocked pretty much every time I've used it straight away. So the F3 has a 4,520 milliamp battery, supports 33 watt fast charging. Unfortunately, there's no wireless charging. Overall battery life, I've been very happy with. The best screen on time was eight hours and 11 minutes, but that day involved uh, light work really, nothing too intense. I also had one day with seven hours and 38 minutes. And on the day I did the gaming test, I achieved six hours and 17 minutes. So if you're a heavy gamer, then definitely expect to recharge throughout the day. The F3 has stereo speakers, which is great. I'd really like to see that. One at the bottom and one at the top. The one at the top is sort of integrated with the uh, loudspeaker as well, but there is a three hole grill cut out at the top. Sound quality is good. It's very loud as well, but don't expect sort of the richer low frequencies that you would get in more premium devices uh, like the Mi 11 Ultra recently. So the Poco uses a similar skin to what uh, Xiaomi do, their MIUI, a different sort of blend of the MIUI. 
pretty much the same but subtle differences like the icons are slightly different color i personally prefer the uh, the Xiaomi look but all in all they're very very similar so again like all the miui phones that i've tested recently notifications don't come through or they are very slow i know for a fact my ebay notifications never come through i have to manually open the app on ebay for the notifications to start flooding through instagram they're very very slow uh, and sometimes opening instagram again will obviously flood the notifications through as well there is also a glitch in whatsapp when you're playing voice notes back i think it's something to do with the proximity sensor so when you're pressing play uh, the screen will go black so the proximity sensor basically thinks you put the phone near your ear or to your face and then it turns the phone black. So the MIUI operating system definitely needs some tweaking. I've heard that the 12.5 version has improved the Mi 11 Ultra tenfold. So fingers crossed the 12.5 rollout for the Poco and the other Xiaomi phones will be a big improvement. Okay, camera time. The camera array looks really impressive on the back. We have a triple camera setup. We have a main 48 megapixel lens, eight megapixel ultra wide, and a five megapixel macro, which to be honest, I never really used that much. I think I probably used it once. And you get decent quality out of there, but there's no real use for me to use macro. So after coming from the Mi 11 Ultra, that was the phone I had before starting using the F3. Uh, coming from that to this, in terms of camera, camera it was, a bit of a disappointment but i have quickly grown to quite like the camera setup yes it's probably the weakest part about the poco f3 but have a look at these pictures while i'm talking and if the environment is good obviously great sunlight just an overall good environment i achieved some really really good shots a nice amount of detail image quality was good through all modes you know including ultra wide as well Maybe not as sharp as the, the main camera, uh, slightly soft, but they're, they're good photos. They definitely, definitely get the job done. If I was being more picky, maybe a bit more vibrance, a bit more pop to the colors would be nice. But Poco had to cut corners somewhere to keep the cost down, and they have done in the camera. Now the F3 has night mode. Most phones have night mode nowadays. It just depends how well they actually do it. This is with a slightly bit of an assisted light to my right. It's like a little security floodlight. And the picture looks pretty good. This next one though is pure pitch black. So no light at all. Um, you can definitely see what it is, but the detail isn't great. It looks, sort of looks like a, an oil painting, especially when you sort of zoom in a little bit. But night mode is okay, but a lot better with a little light source. So on the Poco F3, you can shoot at 4K up to 30 frames per second, and you have stabilization with that as well. This is 4K 30 with stabilization on. And there's the wonderful Rochester Cathedral. It's really nice. Come on, mate. Four K thirty. Stabilization seems good. Pan round. And there's Rochester Castle as well. Now we do have 1080p at 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, there's no stabilization with this. <laughs> again we'll go this way mate So in terms of ultra wide video, you can't shoot ultra wide at 1080p 60 and you can't shoot ultra wide in 4K either. You can only shoot ultra wide at 1080p 30 frames per second with stabilization. This is 1080p ultra wide 30 frames per second. You can't go in ultra wide at 60 frames per second and you can't go ultra wide in 4K either. So ultra wide video 1080p 30 frames per second with stabilization on. Look at the cathedral. Yeah. 
beautiful. So switch around to the front camera, it's a 20 megapixel sensor and you can shoot 1080p 30 frames per second on this. And on the whole I think it takes great selfies, a great amount of detail, colour accuracy is pretty much bang on as well. But these do start to soften obviously with poor or lighter conditions. And for 1080p 30 frames per second video, it's okay, gets the job done. Slight bit of softness I think in, in the skin sometimes. So this is 1080p 60 frames per second on the front facing camera on the Poco F3. What do you guys think of this? It's good it's got stabilisation in. Let's run down these hills. Oh my god, oh my god. I nearly fell. I nearly fell. Come on mate. There we go. So that concludes my review of the Poco F3, an absolute powerhouse, £349, pure, it's a pure performance smartphone, for that price you're not going to get any better performing smartphone at that price. Yes it lacks somewhat in the camera department and it needs a few more tweaks in the software, in the OS, um, after the tweaks it's going to get even better. So, thank you very much for watching. Any questions, pop them down below. Also check out the Poco UK Facebook group if you wanna join there. Keep up to date with the latest releases and news as well, and just have a general chit chat about your Poco phone. So thanks for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. And if you've enjoyed it, and you wanna see more smartphone reviews, unboxings, then consider subscribing. I'll see you soon, bye bye.